The Sony a7C is the best all-round performing camera for videographers slash photographers on the market. If you're a photographer who needs a full frame backup camera or a YouTuber who needs a main vlogging camera for talking headshots, cinematic B-roll or guerrilla style filmmaking, the Sony a7C is the absolute king of compact full frame cameras. Here's why, play tape. So firstly, how cute is this camera? I mean, it is tiny. It's reminiscent of the old rangefinder cameras from the 60s and 70s. But don't be fooled by this small profile. This is not a point and shoot camera, not even close. This is a fully loaded, full frame, pro level camera with all of the same capabilities as the mighty Sony a7 III and some. So essentially, this is a Sony a7 III. It has the same 24 megapixel sensor. It shoots 4K 30 frames per second, 120 frames per second full HD. And it has a five axis image stabilization system inside this tiny body, which is nuts. So the steady shot stabilization system on this camera is pretty decent. Again, a feat of engineering for such a small camera body. And all of the other bells and whistles that you get with its older predecessor. But the major difference between the two cameras is the design. This has been tuned and developed with the vlogger in mind. Sony listened to all of the YouTubers and the content creators and implemented all of those changes into this tiny little powerhouse. So how does this stack up as a pro level photography camera? Well, I'll talk about that later in the video. So why is this camera so good for filmmakers and for YouTubers? Well, firm favourites in the vlogging community have always been crop frame cameras like the Canon M50 and the Sony a6600 because of their size and their weight. And while these are all very capable cameras, the Sony a7C takes things to the next level because it has a full frame sensor in the size of an APS-C body. If you are a vlogger, a lot of the time you're going to be holding cameras loaded with lenses, microphones and tripods. Um, you're going to be on the move as well, so a smaller footprint and less weight is going to be a major advantage. So why is a full frame sensor important? Well, the main reason is image quality and specifically low light performance. If you're pushing your ISO higher to deal with darker shooting conditions or filming at night, then a full frame sensor will achieve cleaner, less noisier image and better results than a crop sensor. The high standards that content creators are achieving right now on YouTube, everyone's shooting in 4K and image quality is way up there, so you have to keep up with those big hitters. Another advantage that full frame has over crop frame is the absence of crop factor. Cameras like the Sony a6600, while this is a great camera, you've always had to deal with a crop factor of 1.5 meaning that if you own a 24 millimeter lens, you're probably not gonna be able to use this for talking head style vlogging because you're gonna lose a significant portion of the image because of the crop factor. You'll have to step down to something like a 14 millimeter lens to get the same results. Likewise, if you're taking establishing wide angle footage, you're gonna to have to use a super wide angle lens so you don't miss out on all that detail in the shot. On the flip side, you have much better reach with a crop frame sensor. Throwing on a 200 millimeter lens will actually get you 300 millimeters because of the crop factor. So there are arguments for it. However, I think a full frame camera is gonna be more useful for vlogging style content and better image quality. So next up is the fully articulating screen, a major improvement from the days of the Sony a7III's tilting screen, which is pretty much useless if you're trying to film yourself, and still even more useful than the flip-up screens from the Sony a6600. A major problem with those is that you couldn't attach a microphone to the hot shoe without blocking the screen. You would have to buy an adapter to offset the hot shoe, and then you're just adding extra weight to the camera and extra things in your bag that can go missing. The Sony a7C now has a fully articulating screen to the side so it doesn't get in the way of things on the hot shoe and it's also protected when you pack it away in your camera bag. The new screen design is a huge reason I waited for this camera to be released. It's really handy for street photography as well and um, being able to get down low without performing some kind of acrobatics is a godsend. It functions as you would expect any other pro level Sony cameras. It's got touch technology, focus peaking assist, um, zebra highlight warning, spirit level, 
the whole shebang. Another huge reason to buy this camera is the real-time autofocus system. It is unbelievably good, and specifically eye tracking during movie mode, something not available on the Sony a7 III, which is what I'm filming you guys on. You only had face detect during movie mode, which was not reliable enough. You would often lose focus on the face and it would grab something in the background and then you would just have to reshoot the footage. It's a huge improvement over the Sony a7 III. Sorry, dude. It uses Sony's AI subject recognition system. So if your subject is human, it recognizes the body, the head, the face, and the eyes. So it will confidently stay glued on you. Even if you briefly look away from the camera, it's gonna stay focused. It also has a touch tracking feature, so if you tap the screen where you want it to focus, even if a human element walks into the scene, it's gonna stay focused on that subject, which is great if you're going for artistic B-roll shots. The camera also accepts these high capacity lithium batteries, um, another huge improvement over the Sony a7 III. You can get around three hours of 4K footage at 24 frames per second, um, even with steady shot and autofocus engaged. You can also trickle charge the battery if you're plugged into the mains using the USB-C connector. So if you have a fully charged battery and you're plugged in, you can get around six hours worth of video. It's also worth mentioning that there is no record limit of 30 minutes on this camera. So you can run 4K footage for as long as the memory card and the battery will allow you. So let's talk about the color science for a second. Um, even though the Sony a7C only shoots in 8-bit and not 10, like the bigger Panasonic GH5, there is an improved color science with this camera. It has much better color reproductions in skin tones, which makes this a desirable choice for the solo shooter or the vlogger because your face is gonna be featured a lot of the time in the shot. It's important to get skin tones looking correct because you don't want odd color casts or oversaturated magentas. Okay, photography. I bought this camera for two reasons. Firstly, because of its video capabilities and I make YouTube videos about photography. And secondly, because I recently sold my Canon 5D Mark III and I needed a replacement as a backup camera to my Sony a7 III. The a7C has the same raw image quality and the same sensor as the a7 III, um, so there's no change there. But there are a few differences, mainly the shutter. This has a mechanical return shutter meaning that it can reduce the risk of shake at moderate shutter speeds, but it can only shoot at 1 4,000th of a second, as opposed to 1 8,000th of a second on the a7 III. It also has a flash sync speed of 1 60th of a second, as opposed to 2 50th of a second. Um, so if you use flash photography or you're a portrait photographer like me, I often shoot at 2 50th of a second, so that could be a problem. So another downside on the photography side of things is the lack of a second second memory card slot. Um, that can be a deal breaker for some professional photographers like wedding photographers. Writing your images to two cards can be a lifesaver. But as a backup camera to have in your bag should you have a catastrophic failure with your camera, I think that's completely acceptable. There's a distinct lack of custom buttons on this camera as well. So if you're used to using custom buttons to access certain functionality, then this is gonna be a problem for you. Um, you're gonna to have to use the menu instead and add items to your My List. Also, the viewfinder on this camera is quite a bit smaller and less resolution than the a7 III, and it's placed over on the left-hand side like a traditional rangefinder camera. So for all of those reasons I've just mentioned, I would probably choose the a7 III as my photography camera. However, for videography, filmmaking, YouTubing and vlogging, the a7C is a clear winner. With the full frame sensor performance in the size and weight of a crop frame sensor camera and the five axis image stabilization found in much bigger full frame cameras, plus the interchangeable E-mount lenses for that cinematic look. This is the Swiss army knife of cameras. So that's it. I just love this camera. I can't wait to get out and shoot with it. So thanks for watching guys. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video and you found this helpful. Um, subscribe to the channel for more photo and video content and uh, let's catch up next week.